You know, I've lived in Austin. I've lived in San Antonio. Very different cities, mm -hmm. culturally, oh, too. Like, oh, yeah. completely different vibes. <laughs> yes. And my yeah. thing is, as right. long as we keep the Spurs here. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Here in no, San done. Antonio, where they okay, belong. We, we can't get the first part of the name. You know, it can't be San Antoston. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I want to show you the setup, guys. I was just reading that the city of Houston expecting this power outage to last up to 48 hours. It's close to a million customers without power across the Houston area. Let me show you just the setup across the entire state. From left to right, a dry line, a cold front, a warm front. The last of those three came through first, helping to further destabilize things. Dry line helped kick up some of those storms that stayed west and really didn't push into San Antonio. And the cold front, don't get excited about that moving through. Unfortunately, we're just not going to change this air mass. It's too weak of a front. But look at this wind shear just centered over southeast Texas. This is wind energy when winds are changing in direction and speed as you go higher in altitude. I'll push this forward through the weekend and you can really see this atmosphere stabilizing Saturday and Sunday. These storms that developed, they clipped the I-35 corridor, but once they moved just north of I-10 is when they got most of the energy. They were moving at about 40 to 50 miles per hour, producing winds of about 80 miles per hour. It was essentially a Category 1 hurricane moving through downtown Houston. And remember, when winds move through a downtown metropolitan area, the buildings act as blocks and barriers to increase wind speeds and increase wind energy. It's kind of like a garden hose. It'll just have water flowing out, but you put your thumb over it. Now that water shoots out faster, right? Same principle with wind moving through and affected with those buildings. All right, out to our north and west, we've got one severe thunderstorm north of Rock Springs producing about quarter size hail, but the hail core shrinking at this moment. So I'm not too concerned about this reaching San Antonio and not much farther to the south and east, but going to watch that sell until about 1045. Computer models bring it into Kendall County by about one in the morning and then racing east and dying out over I-35. Some overnight activity to our southeast. Here's what's interesting. One last impulse developing some storms west of us by about seven o'clock Friday because this setup will be in place for tomorrow. So a slight chance is all I'm going to go with for tomorrow, but we have to watch everything for Friday and Friday night, a category one out of five on a severe weather risk. It's along the Texas coast, mainly tomorrow morning, a level two risk of seeing, again, hailstorms and damaging winds. Then watch this atmosphere stabilize. In fact, this is a ridge of high pressure that builds over top of us for the weekend. That's going to mean hot, dry weather. So this is the last rain chance overnight tonight heading into Friday morning. So the seven day forecast will start with that a 30% chance up to a 20% chance through about maybe early afternoon for San Antonio. Most of anything that does develop should stay west. We hit 89 with some afternoon sunshine, but once that ridge takes over, here's a whole new weather pattern for the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, sunny skies. Look at this heat 94 to 95 and then 95 to 97 Monday, Tuesday and rain free. And by the way, getting into 97, some quick climatology, we shouldn't be hitting triple digits until late June. Last summer, we hit it June 16, before summer even reached this. So we're going to be flirting with triple digits by Tuesday of next you, week. Nate Ryan, be, Nate Ryan's smiling about that. Are you, are you going to be throwing out guarantees on, on triple digit? Oh, heat? no, 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 no. I you learned got, my lesson last summer. You got burned quite literally. Yes, I did, literally. Now, you flew a little too close to the <laughs> sun on. there, Taylor. <laughs> Easy, Icarus.